At the 200, Yulin over the inside. Charmstone and Skirt the Law is starting to get through between Phillies at the 100. Charmstone just in front. Skirt the Law won't get her. Charmstone got it by a next Skirt the Law. Welcome to Vet Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how Pro Funners operate. Sorry, I've been doing uh, a show already. I'm off there a bit. We've had a bit of uh, puppetry to the penis chat pre show, just as a little bit of a, uh, a warm up. Not what? me, mate. I've got an inch. <laughs> if I'm lucky, like on my best day, I'm no puppetry of the penis here. I'll be doing the, the smurf or something. I don't know what my move that's would what, be called. That's why you live up at the Gold Coast for the extra mate. bit of length in the heat. Mate, mine barely. He get poked his head out of the bush once about three times a year. That's it. He's, he likes it in there. Didn't need that detail. Uh, DK, hopefully you strike better than uh, three times a year. Or How you going, mate? Going all right. Yeah, no, it's good fun. Like uh, having Nico here, the sort of generation before, and uh, saying, oh, yeah, him, how to puppy through the penis, Nico, and then explain it to him all about it. That was huge 20 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it was a good warm-up for the show, Scoot. Nico? It's like a birth of fire sometimes coming in here. You, you learn a lot, that's for sure, off air. But uh, now we're chipping away. Good weekend of racing. Great weekend of racing last weekend. So uh, I'll probably uh, try and get the show back on the road at some stage and uh, try and find some winners for the punters. Outstanding. Uh, you've been in uh, some sort of form. I think Brightside and Asfura last week. But uh, quickly, just on the Memsey, I wish I win. Uh, Mr. Brightside, I wish I win, looks on tr- on target for uh, that little uh, pop-up race of Peter Valandis. I thought In Secret was good behind Remark, Mr. Brightside. Any, Everything any kind of went to plan, to plan, except he was just too good, yeah. um, Mr. Brightside. And he did exactly what you thought he'd do. I wish I win, sort of probably looked at winner. I'd love to know what he traded, but he he knocked up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether that was a gut buster or what it was. So it's weird. Now you've got Shinzo's coming out running in the Golden Rose first up with the, the plan to go to the Everest too. So we're going to have two horses, 14 back to 12. First up, second up, remark. Yeah, well, I don't know what that race was. Yeah, a lot um, of people are probably steaming into remark uh, into the Everest into their futures markets, but um, I, I'd have a big query. It's a different gravy, as we said a million times, thousand meters to twelve hundred. I don't think I'd want to be on remark. At I think we kind of all worked that race out pretty well. That there was two horses that were really trying hard, one that sort of was still on the up and mm. had improvement. The other two were fifty fifty to be Gary gone, and now you've got half the world coming out and making a remark a black booker. I think that's. <laughs> You reckon? Funniest thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. It's like it's just been twelves to threes and and lobbed at basically no race, and now they're talking about yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's interesting. Uh, Tate and Bull, she's the uh, the gun for high down there. She was on on fire last Saturday, and uh, Ryan Moore's got the ride for Shinzu. But I, I heard it was a flip of a coin between Tate and Bull and uh, Ryan Moore. What do you boys think about that? Yeah, well, she's the three kilos. I was just having a look. She's it's only a W. She was the beneficiary, I think, of W pin. He was out last week, wasn't he? So she, I mean, we knew she was. Um, she, that's how she got the ride and devoted. But she was, she rode it super. And um, then I was looking through the three claimers, like at Mooney Valley on the weekend. There's only her, uh, Hannah Edgley and Sheridan Clark. So she's, she's. If you want three, she's the one you want to go to. The inform one. Um, you come back to two kilos for W Pin and um, a couple of others there. But uh, as far as three kilos, she looks the main one at the moment, Nico. Yeah, she's, she's riding really well, isn't she? Benedetta was a great ride and devoted. I do think, you know, you probably could have put anyone on those horses and they probably win, but she got the job done. Um, she's probably not a, a plus plus for me at the moment, but, um, you know, if you're finding her, she's uh, she's got a confidence right up, which is half the battle in this game by the seems of things with the jockeys. You know, when they seem to be, uh, you know, when they're full of confidence, that's when they ride the best and she's oh. probably at that level at the moment. Mm, she's eating the pressure for breakfast. That's what I like. Used to be big, big time. Performing. Pike in the last, then it was Bjorn in the last, now it's Roy Bull in the last. It just keeps bloody – She's that's two of the last three weeks. She's landed plunges, hasn't she? Two well, of the last four. I would have rather ta- Tatum on Think It Over. I think Nash gave uh, it an absolute stinker and your horse, Navajo Peak, who you thought was going to pop up somewhere, it's 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 one well, in a probably despicable or the I knew he was getting worst. it ready for a race. I just couldn't work it out. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. It did go good first up and he actually – like he absolutely tore JP to shreds basically saying it was an absolute cast ride first up, which – I don't know if it was or it wasn't, but it it, it went well enough. But um, wasn't it the ride of Chad's life? Like the the race was really ugly, uh, slow run, and he you know he had a presence of mind to sort of get out after the leader after they'd gone slow and you know, think it over. Yeah, it was a, probably I'm, I'm not as hesitant, I'm not as critical on the ride, but he definitely knocked up again. Um, and yeah. Unbelievable. What a weird race. Hopefully someone out there has found twenty dollars or fifty dollars just to throw on it at the big odds once we've once well, someone who through. hates me probably. Like so good luck. There's to a them. there's a few in the YouTube. Yeah, I know, comments. that's right. There's probably <laughs> plenty filled up. <laughs> How do you work that weight for age race form out? Because you're like, yeah, the Sydney form looks putrid. 
that bunch finish first up slow run race and this race, but then Princess Grace has come out and you know, I know she had a perfect gait and everything in that race and it was run to suit as well most likely, but it's sort of you, you watch them and think, geez, that Melbourne weight for age race looked a lot better quality than the Sydney race, but they still kind of tie in together, don't they? So it's hard to hard to work it all out. I think it's the MF boys down in Melbourne. I think the Melbourne four might reign supreme and drop in a couple of internationals. And I think Sydney's a bit on the nose at the moment. It looks like the blood sort of missed the boat. He could have probably won both yeah. those races in Sydney. It was a bit. It was a big run, alligator blood, and it was such Ooh. a big win uh, run on uh, I wish I win. Uh, we've got a massive show. We've got Chocolate Block because as is back, which is uh, beautiful news. So we'll get through it because there's a lot of races to preview and it could be an epic uh, this episode. I've got this feeling. Donnie is on fire. I said that he was going to be back. He launched a, uh, a one-unit double yesterday, which is beautiful. Uh, Rock Empire and Tropical Squall yesterday. Uh, Nico and I nearly fell out of the body chat room when he <laughs> when he mentioned what he was going to do. Uh, but as soon as he saw that fence on fire, he was uh, he was chips in there. So Zarastro last week was good. Peace Officer was another good one. And his horse, Calipor, was absolutely bolting before um, Timmy fell off and there was that carnage in I've the water. I've still never Cup. seen that. But, oh, um, it was a shocker. Do they, do they play? We nearly killed J-Mac. I nearly killed J-Mac with razors. And then so how many come off there? Three. Yep. Uh, Preble was very lucky and... Uh, Regan's okay, and Timmy's. You like Timmy's go? The uh, they released the press release to say ra- fractured ribs. So I I said it to Timmy. He's like, what? Oh. So he rings the doctor, and oh, the wow. doctor's like, oh, sorry, mate, forgot to tell you. Jesus. And he was hoping to ride this week, and now he's maybe six weeks, depending because of the fractured ribs. He forgot to tell him about. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That, that, that is, uh, nothing would nothing does surprise me at New South Wales, but Wyong would be a track that you'd put a bulldozer through. Um, Nick, I'd love to put the bulldozer through Mooney Valley, which would be a little bit sacrilegious, but I can understand why. Of recent well, it'd times. only be a few years too early. They're, they're doing it in bloody two years anyway, sure. so might as well start now. Any track down there, DK, that you'd love to put the uh, the bulldozer through? I was waiting for you to ask me that question at the end of the show, mate, because the, the one that you would put it through having their first meeting back on Friday. So well, that's the bleeding obvious, isn't it? No. And it's going to rain. Mornington. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, what a, what a, just, just blow up the joint. And I'm not the Lone Ranger with my thoughts on that. Anyone said, blow the joint up, you know? So, yeah, mate, definitely Mornington. Yeah. I, I just There's a few tracks before. Yeah, where they, you know, they have to take off sort of into tight bends and you're just always sort of cringing, waiting for something Bad horrible to happen. to happen. And I don't understand why they're in the rotation anymore. Yeah, looks a uh, tricky day at Rose Hill. We've got the run of the Rose, so we've got all the uh, the super horses uh, coming back and uh, the Golden Rose is an absolute beauty of a race. I can't wait for that in a fortnight's time. Uh, Nico, on fire last week. Uh, you were pretty good yesterday. You got uh, a few winners out of the yard yesterday, which is good, and you found the one goer at uh, Hobart. There was a, uh, what was it, drive a deal, just a deal, and it had the Nunthorpe form, so it was always going to be hard to beat in a benchmark 68 or 65 or wherever at Hobart on a Sunday. So that was uh, well found and beautiful business. And, Wasn't uh, that too good to be true in the run? You know, it's a lot midfield, one off. You like put, put down the middle of the track, and it sort of did did its job. It made it hard as possible, didn't it? It was always going to win, but just a yeah, yeah, yeah. Father's Day gift for us all. Late in the day, after everyone's done their absolute kyber on lunch and all that other stuff. Mm. As a, uh, I can't wait to hear what uh, he has to say about NCAP last start. Uh, it was four. Now it's four dollar, four five dollar favorite uh, in the Ming Dynasty. So price gone now, but uh, good to have him back. He's going to spear into the valley, which looks diabolical. Uh, I'm going to uh, Benedetta was the moral of the week last week, so I think I got lucky with a couple of horses, perhaps underdone. But um, she's an absolute beast. And uh, what did you make out of uh, her? I guess condition and what did you think of that race, Nico, with Benedetta and uh, say Majik? Yeah, I don't think Benedetta. Benedetta's got a, a whole lot of improvement in her. I think that's probably about her level at the moment. Looking at the ratings, she sort of put up um, two back-to-back figures that suggest that's probably, you know, about her level. Um, I think she'll probably get an Everest slot. She might be a, a horse that can sort of, you know, figure in the finish in terms of getting their money back. I'd be extremely surprised if she was a, a genuine winning chance. But um, Parasol was good and Sammy Eek probably had a fair bit of improvement to come. I thought Rotarataki was a really good run in that race as well. So I think it'll be a good form race. I just don't know if I want to be... I, Chipsy not <clears throat> I, I thought when, I, you know, those things where they hammered Paracel in the run and then they ended up in the run where they did, and I thought, oh, they got us here. Jelko, he's just too good, too good. But, gee, she was tough. She was fantastic, that last 100 Benedetta to dick in, like, three wide. Terrific yeah. ride, too. Like, I think... It- I think a lot of the move for Parasol was given how far, you know, Ford they thought she was going to be in the run compared to Benedetta. Yeah, Benedetta I got right. The map, the map. Got, got on her back. Map advantage, but uh, 
Gee, she was tough load. Yeah, Sphira, Sphira was great as well. So it was a terrific day at Caulfield. But uh, the Valley this week looks a, a lot tougher than that. It shot pretty straight last week. So uh, hopefully this sad day we can uh, get something out of it. Top sports team as they need to lift uh, the nun from four last week. So hopefully they can uh, hit the board. Uh, top sport, make sure to jump on board with those guys. They've been in the game for 40 years. And uh, Nico and I, uh, the two blind chooks, uh, got the uh, got the lot last week with the, uh, the top two bonus with Asfura and Benedetta. So anyone that chimed in, to the uh, the top two special should uh, reinvest this week. I think we've got another good one. Uh, let's start with the valley uh, race eight is the uh, the group two McEwen Stakes uh, over a thousand meters and uh, Giga Kick here is the favourite and that's the horse that uh, Nico likes. He's dollar eighty five with uh, Top Sport at the moment. Uh, Imperatiz is uh, three dollars seventy. Roth five five fifty. Acromantula is uh, eight dollars fifty. Zoo style eleven dollars. Serenus nineteen. And Hounds of Serenity sixty seven. Giggy Kick. We're going to show the replay of his first up run last time in the Challenge Stakes. So you can see him well out the back. Talk us through it, Nico. Yes, it's a huge run. Uh, come home 17 and a half lengths above on punting form for his last 600 quickest closing splits of the day. Uh, on a track where you wanted to sort of be up and in and there wasn't a whole lot of horses making ground and he sort of flies home down the middle. I think if he replicates a similar performance here, first up, he'd probably just be winning. Um, obviously, he's a pretty short price favorite at the moment at $1.85, but I reckon you'll get closer to sort of 220 on the day. Don't think you're sort of steaming in at the price he is currently, but... Um, you know, on a day where it was probably hard to really uh, sink your teeth into a few races that, you know, you're probably not looking a bit wider. And I thought he was probably the horse on the card that, uh, you know, he's the best sprinter in Australia. And this looks a, a pretty easy kickoff for him, I would have thought. Thousand metres around the valley. It's good speed. Acromantial and Zoo style probably take each other on. I wouldn't be surprised if he's last in the run, but we saw there the turn of foot he has. And uh, I think Craig Williams, if he's just uh, sort of positive from about the 600 metres and gets moving around the outside, I think there's a fair chance the fence will be off at Mooney Valley. And uh, it looks like his sort of race where he could just fire first up. So uh, pretty easy to find, the best sprinter in Australia. But I thought he was uh, definitely worth talking about on the show. And I really keen to see him back. Uh, I think he's sort of strengthened and probably matured. Looking at his recent jump outs and trials, he's looked really strong in them. Seeing some vision of him um, on racing.com. Looks like he's come back a lot stronger this campaign. So uh, I think the world's his oyster this spring and uh, hopefully he can win first up. Yeah, I think uh, the uh, the benchmark for you that, that uh, the minus seven and a half at punting form that's uh, rare as rocking horse poo. That one you don't uh, you don't really see numbers that sort of big. So thousand meters is definitely his go. But uh, Imperatives might uh, find the the thousand a bit sharp, Nico. That's what you're thinking because I know that you do love that horse. Yeah, she's one of mine. Uh, but yeah, I, I just thought of her recent. I saw a trial in New Zealand sort of late last night. She got the synthetic hoof filler going on. I saw this morning. I just. Don't know if everything's uh, like 110% there. So I thought in a race where, you know, you're up against one of the, the best sprinters in Australia, and I do think she is probably better over 12 and 1300, where he's probably a bit more dynamic than her. Obviously, they've got bigger goals in sight, and maybe a horse like Rothfire and probably Acromantra Zoo style might be, you know, here with a bit more fitness on their side, but they lack a lot of class compared to Gig Kick. So uh, really excited to see him on race day. Uh, probably won't back him until I see him in the yard and sort of see how the market transpires, but uh, could be a horse on the day get interested in late. So just just back to what you said there about the track condition, Nico, and the uh, you're, how you're expecting it to play. Um, obviously, it's been forward up the front uh, in recent meetings. So what's just for the punters out there, what's going to change this week in your opinion? Well, the recent, they've had three meetings back. First meeting they had back, I think the rail was the out five. So that lane on the inside was definitely the, the place to be. Then they moved it back into the true and lane five was still the place to be. And then they came back out for the last meeting and it was the place to be again. So I would say there's one or two lanes, three lane four, five, and six that are the better lanes on the track. And where the rail has been has dictated how the track has played the last few meetings. So with the rail back to the true, I would expect it to race a bit fairer than probably what it has recently. Given we've had some pretty good weather here. Um, but with Saturday, there's a bit of rain sort of predicted tonight and tomorrow and even some predicted on Saturday as well. So the fence could just chop out anyway. Mm. And that firmer ground, which it has been the last few meetings, could be pretty compact. So I'd be expecting the lane four and five to be the best on Saturday. Chips in the kick. Yep. I think it's a uh, safe way to play and uh, what you've said makes complete sense to me. Let's have a look at uh, race 10. We're a little bit uh, out of order here, but uh, hopefully you can find your uh, winners across the uh, the, the day. Sorry, uh, Hennessy lads a favourite here in the Powerflow Solutions Handicap over 1,600 metres, 290. First Immortal, 650. Russian Ronnie, 650. Real sensation. This is one of DK's old horses here. Yeah, $9. I was just thinking, I saw that. 
Ain't no deal done. Ten dollars. She's fit. Eleven. Queen Air. Eleven. Vadani. Seventeen dollars. Ramble Rebel. Nineteen. And uh, Ulysses is uh, twenty dollars. There. The replay we're going to have a look at here is Real Sensation, and uh, this horse caught my eye in the Luke Oliver colours as well, Nico. Well, there's been a hot race in front of him. Is devoted. Uh, the horse to his uh, inside also is amenable. Um, they've come out and both run really well since. And thought, given he's probably not up to the class of a few of these horses, uh, this was a really good run. Uh, sort of got wide on the track. Uh, probably didn't just have the zip of a few of them late, but he was first up there. He started $61, made a bit of a mid-race move. It's a little bit weak late in the finish, but I think him and then the horse in the Friedman colours bopping up to his inside ain't no deal done. Probably comes a really strong lead-up race there. Obviously, Devoted Amenable have come out of that race well. I'm not expecting him to get to their sort of heights, but in a race where I sort of thought Hennessy Lad was extremely well uh, found at $2.09. The first nine. thing I saw was that you want to be find a way around it. Yeah. He had it, it was soft in the betting. There was something there that was soft in the betting the other day when we all liked it. 2.30 out to 3 Yeah, dollars. and just had every possible chance and, and you know, didn't charge to the line. And the thing that Legend of Dubai ran second to it popped yesterday, yeah, we where Wycliffe, that. Wycliffe, which was back there, run about tenth in that amenable race. race, it got up and won. So that's that's the strongest race. You're spot on, Nico. Yeah, so that that's what I sort of went looking for when I first did the race. I thought, oh, I backed Tennessee lad last start. Thought oh, he probably got, got away with one. Got away with that. Absolutely. And then <clears throat> sort of on Saturday, he comes up in grade. He's up from a seventy-eight to a ninety. Does drop in weight, but just thought, gee, he looks well enough found at two ninety. Where's where's the sort of the good form one? And that's probably it. Real sensation ain't no deal done at sort of nine and ten dollars. And I did think uh Ulysses might be a bit of an improver up onto better track, uh rid a bit colder as well at sort of twenty. So I think there's a fair few chances around the favourite. If you wanted to dig a bit deeper into the race, you could probably find some angles, but real sensation ain't no deal done. Come through a strong form line at sort of double and, figures each. And he likes it, he has proven at Mooney Valley. He's yeah, proven he's, at the mile at Mooney Valley, he's proven on soft ground at Mooney Valley. Yeah, he's he should have won the, the Vobus Gold race after he won the Stall Maiden. Yeah, that day. Yeah, that was it. And then he won there two starts ago over six eight hundred meters. So yeah. W Billy Pin dropping the weight. Mm. I, I will admit, Trav sort of talked me into this horse, and once I did a bit more deeper digging into it, I liked that no deal Dunn's first up run, but this yeah. does look the oh, the yeah, other one. You probably got it back in the race. Both. Yep. So against the favourite and just uh, trying to find a few angles, but I think definitely the favourite's probably a lay for mine. So real sensation, big drop in the weight to fifty one and a half kilos. So he's he might be the one. Are the two females uh, in the race uh, outclassed here, Queen Air, and she's fit. Any possible hope? She's of she's. Uh, She's yeah, she's a bit of a funny, funny, funny horse. That Queen Air, and I heard Lindsay talking again this morning about her. Um, she's she has been overdoing it and still over racing and still really immature in her manners, racing manners. So uh, he said he'd ideally would have liked to step her up in trip, but because she's been overdoing it, she's staying at the mile. So she's he she, still a few queries on her. And who was the other one? Was it? Uh, she's, she's fit. fit. Well, they're doing, well, they're both they're both uh, you know fillies last season coming up to four year old mares now. She's fit, won the WA Oaks, ran second in the Australasian or the Australian Oaks uh, there. And I think there's the Australasian Oaks in Morpheville. And then uh, started $4.20 in the SA Derby against Duncal. So she's obviously got some pretty handy four mines. Uh, first up run was over a mile and she was a bit outsped, but she does get Willow going aboard here. Can make a case there. And Queen, Queen Air at her best is very good. Like we saw her win that 2000 meter race back in March and she was she was Caulfield Cup favorite after winning that race. So well, she bolted in the valley, wasn't it? That yeah. Was here. yeah. So, won by about four and a half links and then got beat at Bendigo, got lapped. Uh, maybe Jay Carr suits her. I don't, I don't soft know. hands. He's going for the soft hands there. She, yeah. she seems like, yeah, she seems like. I still like want to see her do it again. I think she's a wit's end with yeah. a lot of people, isn't she? Yeah. She's got the ability, but she's a bit she's hit and a bit miss. Of a head scratcher. But a good race to be against the favourite, I would have thought. Yeah, I'd probably agree there. Hennessy Lab did have his uh, birthday last start. Uh, yesterday at Sandy, and, uh, as I said, Anella, Jenny Pending, Osma, all from the yard, and uh, you tip another couple on top without uh, pulling the trigger there. So make sure you get Nico's Manning Yard mail. It, uh, it drops three to five minutes before the race, so you get access to his final thoughts from the yard. And um, it's only 25 bucks a week, so you get all the metros. And uh, there'll be some bonus meetings because Nico will be uh, worked to the bone once uh, the Friday night Mooney Valley kicks in and there's Packenham and Cranbourne and all the racing participants will be blowing up saying it's too much product and uh, us punters will just be picking the eyes out and we'll have Nico's yard, so we'll be uh, in uh, in good hands there. It's uh, it's time to welcome back uh, the assault from uh, Malta. 
uh, to the show. He's wearing his nice little. Looks like uh, he's blue got caught watch. after this, is he? Straight to court. Well, I'd, I'd think he just needs an Akuba. He's probably got the beige or the khaki pants on, and he'd be ready to go to the horse sales. He just gets the. Uh, the Maybe Bible that's what he wears. It's thing. last day of the Magic Millions <laughs> online sale. Maybe he gets dressed up in the gear for the online sales at home. Just pretends he's buying. How are you, Jace? Oh, if I ever want to build my confidence up, I always know just going back on this show is a place to be. Just get absolutely slagged off before I even said a word. <laughs> He's like, let alone like tipple, a magic tipple, employee. Tipple could loser. So any, hey, good to see you, boys. How are we all? No, I just like dressed up for us. It's beautiful. We're all here in the T-shirt and uh, the old uh, the, the punny, punners trackies and the shorts and the thongs and the slippers and uh, mate, you're making us uh, look bad. But um yeah, up and about. I uh, you can bet anywhere, but uh, I think it's balls of steel. You've just chosen the valley. You've picked a couple of tough races, and uh, I love that you're getting into them. So I have, um, you know, my 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 uh, regular motto is uh, uh, be wary of the valley. No one beats the valley. I don't care who you are. Um, so go in wary. I just heard a report this morning that they're talking about watering the track. Um, <laughs> what? It can't be true. So, no, it's true. They're saying if they don't get rain today <laughs> that hard, they're going to water it. So, guys, all I say is, is you know, with all the confidence you can have and <laughs> the your kicks and chips in and all this, you know, just, oh, it's just such a torturous place to bet. You often regret it at the end of the day. So go in, be wary, um, set a plan at the start of the day, stick to those bets, and uh, if they lose, just wait for Maccabi Diva the next week. Yeah, I got I got short odds that it's going to rain today, and it's, there's more forecast tomorrow. So hopefully, Marty and the boys just hold hold fire here a little bit and uh, wait till wait till um, yeah late in the late in the night. I think because we just previewed the Melbourne Collingwood game, and the, I think the totals moved to 13 points, 167 and 154. So that tells me that um, it's a dollar dollar ten that it's going to rain today. So fingers crossed that they don't uh, butcher butcher that one. And uh, they keep their powder dry. First race we're going to have a look at as a as uh, race seven. It's the Brett Preble Riders Academy Handy, a benchmark 100 uh, 2040 handicap here. And uh, the top of the market in this uh, event is uh, Barry Keeley Square at uh, 370. Future History four dollars. Jimmy the Bear six fifty. Aaron Bay nine dollars. Gold Trip ten and Fuller Sincerity uh, ten dollars. So interesting one that uh, Barkley Square Brett Preble's come down to ride it as well. Um, no, nah. as a Oh, Brett Preble, yeah, that's why I wasn't on the show last week. I was uh, still cast over NCAT two weeks ago. My Lord. Uh, Any recording? Are you watching that race? He's kept the ride. He's kept the ride and it's drawn one at Rose Hill. And, uh, and, I mean, God. How how do you back all at $4.50 when you've smacked it at 26 (laughs) two weeks ago and it's been slaughtered? Anyways, let's move on. Race seven at Mooney Valley. Two thousand and forty meter benchmark handicap. Look, I'm going with Berkeley Square here. It's, everyone knows it's in the line. This is its second up um, behind Jimmy the Bear. Right, you are. Look, I, I think right, you are. Proved in the autumn that um, you know, he was Australian Cup favourite before he broke down. He won the Australian Cup prelude. This is him first up, so I think this form's okay. Jimmy the Bear second. It then ran third in the Heatherly last week um, behind Sulcum, who was impressive. So. I think this is okay. Look, he, he has been favourite first two starts this prep at 14 and 16, and, and you could say he's been a little bit disappointed. Um, I've always thought he was a 2,000-metre horse. He also drew the outside gate second up there, so he had to work up the hill at Caulfield, which is never ideal. Look, I just want to give him a, another chance here, um, back to the scene of the crime where he won the Vars in the spring. Um, third up should be peaking. Jai Barrier 6 gets a lot softer run. There's a lot of horses who just can't win in this race. Um, so, look, I think the horse has got ability. And then third up in the uh, spring was when he won that Exford plate, I think it was, that dynamic sprint over 1,400 at Flemington. So, look, the big question with this horse, has he made the progression from three to four um, that we expected? I think the jury's out a little bit, but I do want to give him a chance on the week. And I think $4 is acceptable. You'll probably get a little bit more on the day. I am petrified of future history. I thought that was a very impressive win last week in a small field, but I, I thought it was quite a strong race. Um, and the only other possible is old mate Young Werther, who's had two starts at the Valley, oh, a, sec- a second in an Alistair Clark and an unplaced run in a Cox Plate, draws one, but I'm assuming that's going to be off and it's Young Werther with 61 and a half, so willing to take a risk. Um, going to back Berkeley, scared, petrified of future history, if anything else beats me. Um, too good. 
When you say it like that, yeah, I'm sort of start. If you've been on Berkeley Square and you think he's a decent horse, it's it looks the perfect storm for him here, and especially if there's a little bit of cut out of the track, Nico. Yeah, he's good with the the soft ground. I think he's had four wins in his career or something like that, and a few of them have been on the soft and heavy. So that's definitely a big tick for him. Uh, I was sort of uh, I tipped him on the show last start, and the longer we got into the week, the more I sort of didn't like him. I ended up having something small on him on the day, but just didn't work out from that race. You can see I was just point one hundred percent, but. I kind of thought he's going to have to come and get future history and, you know, that horse has got a four kilo sort of weight advantage and he probably has to come and catch him. So uh, I, I think two chances. I definitely think Gold Trip's in the race. I don't really agree with the sort of commentary that he's gone off his jump outs. He's jumped out of a much shorter this campaign than last campaign. So he was a big run fresh uh, and he gets him pretty well at the weights from Album Cup winner. He only got 62 kilos and he's a 120 rater or something. So uh, I don't think the weight was too bad for him. But yeah, future history on Berkeley Square, one of them probably wins. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, Nico, especially with the weight ball future history he's got there. It's, it's a really good point. Um, I just thought Gold Trip 13, 2040, short run to the first turn. Zara's just going to look at, go back to last and and give it a run. So it's going to have to fly home for the last to win, which, hey, it could do. I, I recall first up at Sandown, he was pretty electric in the in the autumn, um, just going off memory. So, yeah, but I just thought um, sort of map-wise and, um, I just wanted to go with the top two here. Uh, uh, with uh, yeah, as I said, hoping for a bit of toe in the ground for Berkeley Square as well. Maybe he needs that after two hard track runs. So see how we go. Mm. Looks like he's crying out for two thousand meters, don't you think, DK Berkeley Square? Well, I hope, you would hope so. Is he grinded? He only grinded the other day. I thought he presented to win at the top of the straight, and he grinded. So, uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, oh, everything, as I said, jury's out a bit, but, you know, up to 2,000, track he's proven at, get some sting out. So if you're, if you're the forgiving types, which I'm not, but as a as a, as is, um, go again. But uh, I'd be more, yeah, I'd be one with the lightweight up in front of it, probably be looking for an angle around it. But um, I can certainly see as his point. Mm, interesting to see what happens with uh, full of sincerity, 53 kilos. If they can get a, uh, a way a bit cleaner and sit, sit a little bit more forward, that's obviously one of the more progressive runners perhaps. Uh, still a four-year-old, so he's opened a bit of improvement there against some of these other older sort of plonkers up the top and mm, 62 kilos gold trip for a horse that couldn't win a Hotham. Um, he's going to struggle a lot. Karen, 62 around there, Walt. Camel. <laughs> Berkeley okay. Square, Square, Berkeley Square is either a welter horse after this, or he could just forget, or it's going somewhere. We'll find out some way. I wouldn't back even a lower from off that replay. Who? Berkeley Square. Mm, I, I'd be trying to back full of sincerity, maybe. I, don't, I need to. I need to have a good look at the replay, but I look at that race and I don't want to. I, I, I get a headache. I get really. Uh, really sick and sorry but uh i can see why that uh, they might forgive him one more run let's have a look at uh the fan so as has picked the next easiest race and it's globe um put a uh picket fence together this horse but uh has only uh managed to uh win about one hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of prize money 320 favorite with jamie carr barrier 12 this is a big big asset test for this horse tuvalu is five dollars attrition 750 uh, pinstripe eight fifty nine knowledge nine dollars pounding nine fifty Francesco Guardi fifteen Goldman is twenty dollars Luna Flair twenty one King Magnus uh, twenty six dollars uh, and then you've got horses like um, Savva to Excel forgot you out at forty one dollars El Bogger dog a dog uh, too bad to be true first up fifty one dollars and uh, yeah then you've got like Virtual Circle who used to uh, who was the second in the uh, the Derby so. This is interesting. It should be called the uh, the first up Melbourne Cup sort of preview race. It's a uh, it's a it's a fascinating race. It's probably the deepest fee in that you've we've seen or assembled uh, for quite some time, which makes Globe um, somewhat of a, uh, a head scratcher at the three dollars twenty. Or everyone sort of loves um, what he's done so far, being a lightly race horse. But uh, the replay we're going to have a look at here is the uh, the Peter Lawrence, and that's Attrition and Tuvalu, and that's the form line that Aza wants to bring into this race. Yeah, now look, I'm a bit more aggressive on this race. I'm I'm very very surprised at the market. Uh, Tuvalu, uh, given a dead set barrier trial at this race, uh, the market was hard on it. Uh, they just were very negative early. Blake just ran out and down the middle, ran a decent fourth. Attrition was four wide the trip. Pinstripe was, you know, had a cozy run. And attrition, that last 50 just kept coming. I like it when you've when you've overworked during a race, you don't just spit the dummy out. You, you keep coming at the end looking for a horse to improve going forward. I'm just shocked at the market here. I mean, 
Globe went up two dollars seventy. Um, yeah, sure, it's a promising horse, but I mean, it, it's one, it's one midweeks so and then one a Saturday. Who did it beat? It beat an Albany Rich from from memory and got like ten kilos off it. Um, I know everyone's saying it's the second coming and all this sort of thing, but to me, you've got to prove it before. Um, you know, I'm taking two dollars seventy for you in a in a Group Two weight for age race first up over a mile. It's going to get absolutely hassled in front here. You've got deny knowledge. All go forward. An old mate suburb to excel with Caitlin Jones on it from 15. I mean, what's it going to do? Um, the pace is going to be on. If it can sit on speed first up and win, it's a very good horse. But for me, Blake will just push Tuvalu out. I've got it mapping one by one. Um, if you forgive its autumn, which you have to because um, it, it was a bit of miss, uh, the two starts before that over a mile, it's winning a Turo. And it's running second to Alligator, splitting Alligator Blood and Mr. Brightside away for age. Please, how is this? Gone up seven bucks. I've unloaded on an each way, absolutely unloaded. Um, and the other horse I'm backing in the race is Attrition. Um, so it's, um, you know, look, it showed a lot of promise. Again, we're looking at a horse and they take that leap from three year old to four year old and make that improvement. Um, it's an Australian Guineas run was superb. Um, what we do know, we do know Bank Moore's come out since in that Memsey, um, and got beat two and a half lengths in a hot race. And we know Amenables, um, just put the riding on the wall that it's a moral in the, uh, in the tour rack. So the format of the Australian Guineas we're saying is holding up. The question is, is that first up run enough for attrition to say that it's also improving into its four-year-old year? I'm saying yes. This is a target race for it for the spring. They're not pushing for Cox Plate or anything like that. They want to win this, put it away and look after it. Um, so I'm going to say attrition as well um, is the other one I'm going to be on um, at $9. And if Globe beats me, so be it. Uh, I think these two are the best two miles in the race from what they've produced so far in their career. Globe's a weird one. I gapped at it its first start in a race because it had uh, Equicast on, which is very weird for a first starter to have Equicast. So then it wore that on its feet first two runs, continued its prep that came off for its third run. So it mustn't have been a huge issue, but still weird. And so it's a, like completely, yes, I'm not telling anyone to back it at seven to four, but it's a horse that could, if its feet are right, this prep, and it's um, could do anything. It's crazy. But interesting, like even Jamie riding this horse, who sort of, yeah, she's definitely not back to her best yet. So she's a query as well. Like, very yeah. interesting horse globe. Interesting you say that. I've been observing the same thing she hasn't got that she's she was winning everything from osl and she's just not getting them home at the moment i'm not sure she's been as good since she's been back she got off tuesday and said you hardly ever ride a horse like this she's beaming about it mm. um and i think everyone's just jumping on that but uh, look the market's correcting itself a little bit um as i said it may win but just the way i bet uh for me um, i just i just i just can't yeah it's not it, it's not a horse I can bet when you've got good old hardheads in here proving it way for age. Um, as I said, it's beaten Normandy Bridge, got five kilos off it, beat Daytona Bay. I think Daytona Bay ran up the Kai the other day. Um, so, um, you know, one race to beat here for a good time. I mean, it's mm. an absolute camel. So, um, look, he's smacked them. I get it. It smacked them. It's running time. I get all that. Um, but as I said, first up a mile, wait for age, pressure, not for me. It did beat a, ho a horse called a fair, a, a Swevere or whatever, the Adelaide Oaks winner, and she was she was pretty dominant. Adelaide. I know I know it's Adelaide, but that's it, like on Adelaide. debut. Only you'd bring up Adelaide form. I love it. As, <laughs> I a, love as a great strong form reference. No, but I'm interested to like visually. This horse is one like an out of like it's like a freight train that they just can't stop. I've seen many movies, and this little globe, the little engine that just doesn't stop running. Like I'm fascinated to to hear what DK thinks about this horse visually, and then um, maybe Nico after that, because obviously that's that's, that's it. it started in DK's backyard, and now it's been playing in Nico's. These guys know a lot about this horse. What what do you think, DK, about this horse? Yeah, well, he's another. He's another like the cleaner or something, isn't he? Isn't he just? He's going to be one of these horses, just like a steam train up the front. Um, <clears throat> I thought what Walt said about his feet is very interesting and his trial, Nico, I just, I even, I saw it again this morning, the one at the Cranbourne trial, bloody hell. It was insane, wasn't oh, it? Was he a rude bit of work? Jeez. Um, one by about 15. <laughs> he, he made Gold Trip look like a draft horse. Oh, and yeah. a pot, I was looking at things we behind the YouTube him. Sorry. Yeah. Hey? Well, it's, it's real hard to make a draft horse look like a draft horse, isn't it? Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, go, go, guys. But, uh, I mean, we did see the significance of the runs under the belt. So, as is Angle, the runs under the belt last week, didn't we, in the, in the Memsey with Princess Grace and Mr. Brightside versus the two Alligator Blood and, and, and I Wish I Win, who peaked on their run. So, um, Two Valu and Attrition have got that good run under their belt, so it's going to hold them in very good stead. But, yeah, look, I, yeah, uh, who knows what the ceiling is on this horse. Um, so, yeah, what are you about here, Nico? Well, I just thought, you know, looking at his last up run, you go, oh, he's beat Normandy Bridge and Daytona Bay. Normandy Bridge won three in a row after that, and Daytona Bay won at Flemington, then ran second to Normandy Bridge's run after. So the form really stacked up. T-Waters went out of the race. Uh, it was a, a high-rating race, and most of the horses out of it ran well. So... I think that's probably a little tick for him as well. Yeah, I I can understand why people don't want to back him at three dollars. Uh, so yeah, I can understand the the angle to sort of take him on and look at Tavolu and Attrition and a few others. I thought Pounding was a bit over the odds at fifteens, isn't it? To nine fifty, I thought he was a good run in the Lawrence as well. And will be suited to Mini Valley, but I think the race is really uh, you know from a review point of view, see how good Globe is. We get to you know if he sticks his hand up and wins that race, he's uh, he's the world's at his oyster for the spring and. Um, and then you're sort of looking at Francesco Guardi, Goldman, Luna Flair, where they sort of are for a Melbourne Cup point of view. So uh, no, it'll be a fascinating what, what, race. What sort of horse is he from the yard, Nico? Was he? Oh, he's big. He's he? he's an absolute weapon from the yard. He? Uh, but he's he's not there mentally. Like yeah. he's still oh, he's does only, a lot. Right? Baby, isn't he? he's yeah. He, he's just like hey, races in the yard. Yeah. He just runs around the whole time. Just <laughs> has no idea. So I saw him the other day at um, Soundown actually when he had a track gallop and. Geez, even come back stronger. So, well, uh, and so funny you should say because Pushka was on the radio this morning saying the same thing about Stepati. You know, he's still learning the caper, still a bit dumb, but he's had that break come back this prep. He said, "What's the main difference? Is he's a lot smarter. He, he's he's twigging to what he has to do, which is you know, when, they, when they've got the preps under their belt." Yeah, not many horses go from Baden to BM one hundred and win all of them by two and a half lengths plus, yeah. do they? So, yeah. now he's talented, but I, I can see ours as angle for sure. I reckon. I reckon you've nailed it. Uh, this is the race that you got to take him on. Playing book, bookie hat on, you have to put him in and um, and just hope like heck he hasn't just come back a complete beast and a cl- complete monster. As yeah, well, that's as I said. The horse is a good horse. There's no doubt about it. If he wins this, to Nico's point, you know he's, he, they can start thinking about Cox Plates um, with him. But um, yeah, just just for the purpose of this, I'm just. Uh, Back in the others each way, and I'm, I'm happy with that. If one of them runs a hole, I'll have a small loss. If one of them wins, I'll, I'll be going well. Beautiful. So the uh, the big confidence race is the fee and stakes, and then uh, we're sort of forgiving uh, Barclay Square. Beautiful. As a good luck with the uh, online sale there, and uh, you can put your. He struck, co- co- struck gold in that online sale. No, absolutely not. He's going going well, DK. We're actually drop going it, drop to it back, drop it back to fifty eight grade. I reckon. <laughs> oh, there we go. About that. It's a bit harsh. Well, um, he'll run at um, Seymour on Thursday. We're going to run it. Seymour Thursday. Be hard to yeah. beat. Hey, that track will suit him because that track's been a bit testing. In that's the, sort of um, in the sixteen hundred sixty four by any chance. No. Oh, who's oh, going? Oh, here we go. go. Unfair to. Sp- no, no, we're good. not stepping him up, Nico. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to take him on without it us. <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, it's um, it's interesting. Uh, well, I actually, he nearly fell when the gates opened uh, when he ran second there last start. But um, Anthony's really keen to get him to try and take a sit, but he's just been jumping so well. Geordie's taken him to the lead, so it does worry you a bit if he jumps well again and they and they restrain them. And um, but look, he does he does think he'll have ability. Um, chasing, so which he did in his New Zealand maiden run, which we bought him off. So, got talent. It's nice to have a horse that's competitive at at those levels, and um, hopefully break through again soon. And um, but either way, I think we'll put him out, and we've got a horse, the Castle Dales run for quite a few years. So I think we should have a bit of fun with him, which is good. Hmm, I think I'm nearly ready for another horse. I just I'm just going to put my, make sure my phone's not on silent next time as it plucks one out of New Zealand because the next one might be the group horse. I'm ready. Oh, well, there's, um, there's a group horse going around. Uh, I'm not, I'm not allowed to type here, but you have a look for yourselves. There's a group horse going around the next few days that'll be winning. That's a good Samurai? Point. Is that Samurai? Uh, it's not Samurai, but it's, not on samurai. The same, it's on the same day as Samurai. I'll leave it's that. on the same day as Samurai. You'll find it. You'll find All right. it. All right. Be, might, have be said, might, might have said too much. Thanks, boys. Have a good one. Thanks, luck. Jace. We'll see you next week. Good luck, mate. Cheers. Look forward to it. Okay, like his two-back strategy there in the fan stakes, and he's filled me with a, a fair bit of confidence there. Sc- time for the favourite sh- segment of the week, Scooty's Moral. Who's? Scooty's Moral. That's I me. thought you were only allowed on when as it wasn't on. Oh, You've just inserted yourself back into the lineup. Yeah, we've had no one email you've, and hey, no just one asked. retire ask. on Fangirl, no, mate. No, 
Okay. Retire on Fangirl. <laughs> I'll retire as soon as I tip a loser. Oh, God. What did you find another win last week? Who yeah, was it? Benedetta. Oh, it's Bolted cool in. No, it Took on Jelko. See you, Jelko. Parasol was just unbeatable. Watch right? films, Jelko. You just don't know what you're doing. All right. <laughs> Valley he's six. not watching films. He's hey? checking his $4.3 billion bank balance. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, he's not watching films. I promise you that. Ever heard of David and Goliath? Yeah, he's David. No, and, I'm and David. Goliath. <laughs> I'm, da- I'm David. He's Goliath. But um, that's that's why we all play the game. The game is for everyone. Charmstone's favourite in the uh, Musk Creek Atlantic Jewel uh, 1200 listed. Charmstone's favourite here three dollars twenty. Inhibition six dollars. Price of O'Sullivan uh, six dollars. Molly Nick is seven dollars. Right to party seven dollars. Oz Oz Empress nine dollars. Treasure Way is twelve dollars. Zuccaret fourteen. Sonic Booms twenty six. And Beauty Rising twenty six dollars. Replay we're going to have a look at here is Charm Stone. Loved everything about this win. And uh, here she is, uh, four wide sort of out the back. Nico's horse, the one that he potted, skirt the laws in the pink and the white. It sort of jumps back off the canvas. But um, love how she kept grinding away to the line here and think she's just come back bigger and stronger. Uh, <clears throat> hey, you've potted everyone for betting into Moody Valley and now you're chiming into Moody Valley. Well, mate, I went through all states and I thought Possibly this is... Possibly anything in Adelaide, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> She was dual. <laughs> she was dual nominated. That was scratched from from Adelaide. But that's uh, where we saw the replay. Yeah. We're doing the Adelaide form. That, that's why I just noted it was a scratching in Adelaide. But I thought she was huge first up. Interesting. I think Damien Lane rides Mooney Valley as good as uh, anyone. I think Craig Williams and D Oliver have uh, had the joint nailed for a long time. But uh, when Frosty was a young boy, he was uh, riding plenty of winners at the Valley. So I think he can actually fox them a bit here or he can sort of find the back of inhibitions and sit a lot closer than people might map her. And that's probably why you're getting such a good price at the, the 320. And I think that I could easily have her closer to sort of even money. I think she's uh, the real deal here. And I'm very happy to put her in a, uh, a top two special with uh, with Top Sport with Nico's horse, Giggy Kick. So you uh, you can take uh, Charmstone and uh, Giggy Kick to finish uh, top two for 100 bucks for a 325 dividend. So same price as uh, the Asphora and Benedetta double um, last week. And I think that uh, Giggy Kick and Charmstone will be uh, both winning. And uh, you can get the little top two insurance at Top Sport. So so make sure you open up a count there. But uh, Nico, what do you think of uh, the 320 or all this race? Am I um, just a bit too confident or, or too big for my boots here or is she immoral? I thought the funniest thing was she went up 210 in the all-in and then they reopened the prices up at 380. So I don't know up in there. But, uh, yeah, she's she's a horse to beat for sure. So uh, looks looks her race. We backed inhibitions the other day and she had everything go away. So um, you're probably looking for a bit of fresh blood and that's, that's her, the class horse. 1,200 is probably the slight worry. 11, I'd be pretty confident, but 12 may be the uh, the thing that gets her beat if there is something. I really like Molly Nickers as a horse, but uh, 1,400 back to uh, 1,200. This They might just be giving her a buy this start, and I'd look look for her next start, maybe on a bigger track. Well, that was short and sweet. That's all right. I'm allowed to have my little moral, my little five minutes of fame on the show. I'm just going to do it now every week just to give you the Jimmy Brits. Puntingform.com.au. Cut, that, is cut ha- that bit out, Borco, that whole segment, would you, mate? <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. Puntingform.com.au enables me to uh, just uh, step across any state and uh, into Walt's backyard anywhere to find a winner. So make sure you check out puntingform.com.au. It's definitely taking my betting to the next level. Walt, uh, Rose Hill uh, this week, uh, weather, not sure what's happening in Sydney. I think it's uh, all good. Yeah, all clear? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Last check, all good, all Look, good. Looks a completely diabolical uh, meeting. I did try really hard to try and find a, a best bet in uh, in Sydney, but uh, I, I found the meeting far, far too hard at this stage. It looks like uh, a complete nightmare. So race four is the first one that uh, you like here. It's the uh, the Rambit Handicap, benchmark 78 over 1,500 metres, and Gracie Styler with Nash on is $3.10 favourite. Uh Venelope or Venelope, uh, $4.20. Uh, Unspoken, four sixty dollars in from seven. Uh, Ivan's Hero, $5.00. Danish Prince, seven fifty. dollars Highlights, $21.00. Momac, $21.00. Bluff and Bluster, $26.00. And you can get better the rest here. There's uh, Unspoken's a horse you like here. Four sixty. dollars Yeah. Well, what's happened there? Not sure. What was it, $7.00 or something like dead set two hours ago? No, it was $5.00 when you sent it through this morning. So, yeah, Unspoken is the replay we're going to have a look at here. This is her... Or him, uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, first up last time, it's a him. He's a gelding. So he's in the black with the uh, the white hat here, chasing just the, the tearaway leader, the lone leader here. What's going on here? Yeah, so this is the mighty Kenzo track, I think. It was just a, a day where it was uh, fenced pretty good and, and these guys sort of gave huge 
huge uh, gap away that they couldn't reel in, but are pretty amazing and unspoken, a, a lot better horses than the, the, the winner there, Lovewire, I, I would say. I think pretty amazing came out and won off the back of that and unspoken put in some decent efforts without winning. I see they've um, they've taken the blinkers off Winkers on, given him a trial the other day uh, where he went around against, I think it's Tarazel or whatever the, the um, stable mate is there and thought he... He moved really nicely. I think from one, the key to this is probably there's quite a bit of speed. You've got um, Danish Prince, Lavoir, Ivan's Hero drawn wide, probably wants to go forward to and Momac or Momac and Lavoir, Danish Prince all love to settle in the first two. So I think there's definitely enough tempo there. And then he just needs to to bounce and hold as close a spot as he can. Obviously, that inside draw at Rose Hill's a, a good thing until it's not. It's, um, it's absolute gold unless you don't get the run when you want it. But if I think if he does... He's just clearly the strongest horse in this race. So I think poor old Gracie Stylers, I think she's seventh or eighth up this prep and and just keeps doing similar things. She was a bit unlucky again the other day in that slow tempo. But, yeah, I'm, I, I think, you know, she's the horse you got to sort of take on at this time of year when better horses are, are, are coming to their own and she's sort of peaked, I think, on what she can do. So I think uh, Unspoken suits that uh, mould and... I'm just scared of this Penelope. I've, I've, I love the horse. Blink is on perfect draw. If it gets the run whilst Unspoken's looking for it, I can just sort of feel that she's the one that gets out and sprints and Unspoken sort of chases and doesn't run it down. So, yeah, I, I thought it was about $6 um, when I wrote it down this morning, Unspoken. So I was more than happy to sort of back in at $6, save Penelope at whatever it is, about four fifty. So 4 I think is probably about its right price, to be fair, Unspoken, but it's still, as you said, it's a hard day and, and that was the the best option, and a nice enough horse coming through a weak enough race. Mm, I think you found that too. Yeah, most progressive horses, and then they've kept the Vanellope a little bit fresh here, and um, pretty good run on job uh, last time back in uh, in August there. So nice little mini target race. She's that, been that setting impossible well. tasks yep. every start, and if those blinkers work, you could just dead set see like yeah, if they go too quick, chiming in, putting two on them, and then whether unspoken gets out in time and can chase it down, or yeah, if Gracie Styler wins, too good. Uh, Nash is, Nash is the best at doing that to us. But, uh, yeah, I think this horse has definitely peaked this preparation. Can we get see a bit of 6, six or 6.50? It might be a little bit softer in the market given the settling position unspoken. It's to me, it doesn't look bit, like a horse not. that should firm early. That's what's surprising to me. And, like, obviously a trial quit pretty nice, but it um, doesn't really stand out. Even JP's not in, in career form. He sort of um, seems to be finding dead ends every time he, he chooses the – the left or right option at the moment, which is, you know, how racing goes. So it's not as if he's on anyone's radar and uh, Snowden's fresh, not really on everyone's radar. They're definitely going better at the moment, the stable. But, yeah, it's a bit weird that it's an early firmer. I didn't think it would be found at all, to be honest. I thought Penelope was more of a chance of being the one that started yeah. favourite. And, uh, still, yeah, I thought Unspoken, yeah, I could easily see it getting back towards 6 bucks. Well, as DK, it would be the sharpshooter trial pervs that would have knocked off the $7. Yeah, potentially, thought. and, uh, you know, it did trial on the winkers, so I'm not mm. sure. All right, that looks like a, a good little uh, two-bet strategy on a tricky day, and we'll, I guess, go to uh, the main course, or that's how we sort of see it, and that's the uh, the run of the rows. And Cylinder uh, goes here second up after a little uh, trip down to Melbourne, so 205 in from 220. Um, congregations going to scratching there, so it might be a genuine move. Uh, Libertad four dollars twenty. Don Corleone is eight dollars. Kadinsky abstract eleven. Butch Cassidy thirteen. Uh, Moravia is sixteen. Militarize eighteen. General Salute twenty. Nadal twenty one. Chrysor forty one. And Missile Defense one fifty one. So that's the lot. We're going to have a look at the San Domenico as the uh, number one lead up here, and this is Libertad Chad one out one back. Yeah, so it lobbed there by sort of act of God. You got, I think Butch Cassidy's directly inside him in the limey, greeny colour of the the Harren colours. You've got who else is in this race? Kendinsky, abstract, abstract coming around the outside. Are they the only ones? Oh, Moravia coming around the heels of Libertad. So General Salute. Uh, yeah, General Salute in the yellow behind them. It's a bit of a a reverse of um, of this race. It's a bit weird. Libertad's the one that sort of drew wide there, with so they all did and sort of lobbed in from outside spots, which was a bit of act of God. Whereas this time. He draws ideally to, to follow Cylinder wherever it goes. So it's pretty hard for, to split. Now, I thought Cylinder was pretty good in, in Melbourne and he's, he's looked bomb-proof. He, he certainly didn't blow them away down there, but um, his effort was a pass mark. He wasn't weak on the line. There was nothing to really knock him too hard about, but I, you know, $2.10 was a bit tough from, I think, 1200 is his kind of limit too. So 
Uh, yeah, Libertad certainly got a lot of upside. I think it was underdone going into that race and, and just lobbed the right spot and was, was too good. So I think it's only got upside from that race. The horses that you're sort of looking to, to beat it out of that race are drawn. Militarised first up, drawn seven, it's probably going to get back. Don Corleone from eight is probably going to get back, even though it showed some speed in a trial, but it was a very slow run trial. I'm not too worried about it. Moravia drawn. 11, General Salute 10, Kandinsky Abstract 9. So they've got to make a decision to push forward and hope to to get lucky like a couple of them did last start or not. But Cylinder and Libertad are going to land in the ideal spots automatically. So very hard to be against them. I thought Nadal went like an absolute rocket mm. on the Kensington first up and and Gate, well, two, I think, I don't know if it comes into one with that scratching now. Either way, it's going to be just behind them, probably three pairs back on the fence and could run a cheeky race at odds. That sort of maiden Kenzo form coming to uh, <laughs> run to the Rose is a, a big jump. And Butch Cassidy went really well there and looks like he probably, I think he wants further than 1,200 to be up to this sort of level. But it's it's a tricky race. It's similar to that that race last time around where we we wanted to find the 20 to 1 chances just because they the gap looks too big between them and the favourites. But I think the favourites get all the favours here and it's, it's hard to take them on. I think it's a race I'd rather watch for the future. Just it's not really a nothing stands out. As much of an angle to, to bet with. Mm, but uh, plenty of people are all over uh, I Am Unstoppable as a horse for the future and uh, Cylinders still put him away. Nico, you saw you saw him uh, in action. Probably you saw him for the first time in the flesh cylinder. You are a blue jacket lover. You've got blue sheets, blue satin sheets, blue pillowcase, blue curtains. Everything's blue. What do you think about this horse? I saw him back uh, sipping Classic Day and then saw him – his first up run, it was like looking at a different horse. He's strengthened so much since then. Obviously, that was November to sort of August or whatever it was. But yeah, he was uh, he was pretty big condition first up. He was definitely there, you know, fit enough to win. But I think that was telling sort of late in the finish, given he didn't put them away. I reckon he's probably been set to peak sort of third or fourth up. And that fourth up could be in the Coolmore, which is in November. So he's definitely not fully screwed down yet in his campaign. He will take a lot of improvement out of that run. I think Nash really suited him. Uh, yeah, no surprise. I, I'm tipping him on top. I do like Libertad. I backed him uh, to win the kindergarten and thought he was a good winner there first up. And then I suppose you do have the best horse in the race at $18, Militarize. Uh, just whether he's here to play is uh, probably the question mark there, but probably we'll be kicking ourselves if he wins at 20. Is Reggie given... on it? I thought Reggie being booked on it. Is it Reggie? No, it's It was, a, it was because... a weird booking. No, it was Zach. It? Zach Lloyd's Is it on. Zach? Yeah, well, okay. Well, everyone loves Zach, so maybe it's not, but it, Reggie's yeah, on it looked like a barrier trial. Yeah. Well, I know it did, mate. It's what is it? It's a it's, it's definitely not a barrier trial because they win these lead ups and things worth so much money to them. But you would imagine they'd be going to be negative out the gates and it's going to face a, a pretty solid task. If you forgive his um, the slipper run, which you did and you had to, well, uh, you're a very good horse, the source, militarized free bet. That's probably the one that you have to land on for mine. Couldn't back it with yours, hey? How's he going to win? Is it possibly going to win? Yeah, we'll give him a head start, won't it? So, yeah, it's still on this race to lose. So, like I said, he had a bit of improvement to come first up and he still won the race. So, you probably have to factor that in as well. And DK said it before that uh, we've just seen it time and time again. Horses with the run under the belt might just have a little bit of an edge over a horse like Militarize and a couple of these first Especially up horses. Especially when you land in the right spot too. Like yeah. It's going to land in the wrong spot one, one. and give them, give them – uh, Fitness as well. It's 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 a, a double bunger. And you got Nash. Nash. Nash will just be all over it. We hope a little bit more vigor than the um, think it over ride. He just was so much remind him where it maps. I watched the replay a couple of times. The great man Mark Sheen when uh, Piero won some race. I'm not Nash sitting down to ride it out. And yeah, it's a good combination. Nash riding one out and Mark Sheen calling it. Those were the days. Let's uh, racingwatch.com.au is where you find all Johnny stuff. So uh, the chat room is a great place to hang out if uh, you want day-to-day information. They talk about races 24-7, barely sleep material. And then if you just want uh, to follow Johnny's best bets, you can uh, get it from the Telegram group. So can't uh, endorse that enough, racingwatch.com.au. And now it's time for uh, Donnie's Best. G'day, gents. Johnny's back with this weekend's best bets. We went two from two last week. Zapateo and Peace Officer, both pissed in. Uh, looks a bit tougher at Doomman this weekend. So I'm heading south. Best bet comes up in race six at Rose Hill. Zapateo has had two beautiful trials for Cummings and Lloyd. It's going to stalk the speed. IME could be a risk. It won a race where there was a big four last start to the main hop. Hopes got taken out. It might not lead either. So Zapateo is going to be the stalking horse. It should be one out, one back following IME. 
will likely get OSL. It's going to have its chance to get past it. So hopefully it can. Um, hopefully also Walt says they don't have any chance of winning like he did last week with two of my bets and they both pissed in. He said if it won, he's going to run the marathon or peroxide his hair. So I'm not sure which one will be easy for you to do. Walt runs 42Ks or lose that ranginess. Anyway, good luck, boys. Cheers. Well, a little bit of a tug attack. It's, oh, isn't, oh, oh. isn't it scary that he's a school teacher, right? <laughs> Yet what I said was unrealistic for a marathon because I couldn't possibly run 4,200 and there's no chance in the world you're peroxiding my hair because what does it matter? I walk around with red hair anyway, so it <laughs> makes no difference. And I would donate to his next charity, which I'm happy to do. Nearly had to donate to uh, James McDonald's uh, funeral. funeral fund, but um, uh, <laughs> lucky I didn't kill him in the process. But no, good on him. Was, I'm, I'm happy for Donnie that he won a three-horse race with a sixty pop falling off at the start like. You know, some some of us need an act of God win to just kick along every now and then. So, it's, and it's taken him yesterday. He's got that double gaze. He's, he's flying now. I'll tell you what, anyone that's back raises the last couple of starts need, needs just an act of God or just miracle result because it's been when he won first torture. up, it was like pure pain the whole way. It was oh. awesome. But uh, I might leave it off the hook because, yeah, Jay, mate, obviously fell off and it wasn't really a race. But Zarastro. Yeah, I'll donate to him next time he goes around. <laughs> Zarastro was the uh, the horse that Donnie tipped last week. So he's he's got, he's, uh, he needs a selling chain, Johnny, because he's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Donnie, because he's, um, he's got Rose Hill Race 6, Zapateo and Zarastro, who he backed last week, mixed up there. But uh, Donnie is seeing them really, really well. And he's on fire in the Little Birdie Syndicate. As I said, he, uh, he had that gay leader double yesterday, one unit, and. Uh, it was a, uh, a real flare bet. So he just sent a message saying that the uh, forecast has changed for Sydney or something to say that um, that might help Zapatea too. So maybe keep an eye out on the radar if there is a little bit of rain. I don't think there's enough to do too much of the track, but yeah, I've seen stranger things happen in Sydney in a lead into a spring. He must have recorded that video at 5 a.m. because I was looking at his window when I was watching that film and um, it was pitch black dark. So that's why he's got the names mixed up. He's up there. Up at 5 a.m. He's doing just the pumped form. for Zapoteo, I think. He's just calling everything Zapoteo for the next three days. I think look, he's all in. He zapped himself. Top sport steamers, uh, no dice this week. Oh, last week, sorry. I mean, I'm getting confused now. Mooney Valley uh, race six, number seven, is the first one here. Right to party. This is uh, against Scooty's Moral. So uh, I'm a bit nervous now that I've seen 300 at $8. Nico. This yeah, good run last week. Well, it was a good run. Should probably settle close from the map, get Zara on. Yeah, definitely looked a, a key chance and probably a big danger to uh, Charm Zone. Morfittville, race six, number nine, and uh, that is seafaring. I, even though Walt ribs me about Adelaide, I haven't quite got to uh, got to this one yet, the uh, seafaring, but this thing is unbelievable. Oh, well, there's actually a couple of big big deductions there. So uh, Rockby Road and Reservoir Dog have come out, which is uh, massive deductions there. So the, the market move. What's going on, mate? How do you not know this horse? Your backyard, bread sure. and butter. No, well, it's a 1950-metre goat race at Morfittville, so I usually save them for a little bit later, and luckily I have because there's save the best for last. <laughs> 80, 80 cents of deductions to come out of there, so 420 could still be a good price, that one. And the last one here is Dooman Race 9, number 8, Sir Rocket, so 125 or what is it? Sorry, Jeez. 250 at uh, $16, so... That looks like a it's a race with a fair. That's an ex Bjorn, ex Michael Costa. Now with Camp Adam is Campton. It, train, is it? Trains this one now. Uh, I reckon bloody Heathcote had it as well. Geez, he's yeah. been passed around, but he's Ro a tough old horse. Uncle Robbie had it. Um, Situation Room, Orbison, Destination, uh, Space Boy, Stuttering, Grey Worm, Grey Worm won the other day. I mm, couldn't yeah, believe like it. Lismore or somewhere. Yeah, yeah it snuck out under the radar. Chatty Lady. Uh, so that looks like a race with uh, plenty of pace in it. So um, Sir Rocket might uh, rocket down the outside for uh, Campo, who's got that other good horse that runs like a rocket. So maybe uh, maybe they can find a winner there, but it could be slim pickings looking at some of those odds. So Seafaring, Right to Party, and Sir Rocket are the three uh, early uh, swings at Top Sport. DK, DK, um, we're all now going to be going looking for um, Az's cryptical Group 1 horse. Group 1 horse. But what about you? <clears throat> so that, that samurai I said was um, so similar to his first start over here from New Zealand. I thought it might have been it because it ran second in New Zealand come out of here, but it's not it, but it's uh, – he said along the similar lines of it. Uh, that's a winds of that. That's a Cranbourne. Uh, might be a Cranbourne. When's Samurai? Samurai's tomorrow to morning. Well, I'm not tipping there. Um, no, acceptance is a three for um, Horsham. Horsham Saturday, Custard and Sunday. That's where I'll be going. I won't be going anywhere near Mornington Friday. Uh, race two, number 
Race two, number two, TNT. Oh. Huh? Moral. Moral. There you go. Nico agrees. It's amazing we have these races down here where nothing wants to lead. They're all under instructions to get cover, every single one of them. And that's what happened to this last start. This poor horse drew the outside barrier. was always going back. But then all of a sudden, nothing else. Everyone's going to hand up. So Billy Egan said, I'll take the front on this. Yeah, they go like, what, 10, 10 below to the 600 or something. It was ridiculous. And he just scooted home. And this thing obviously just charged over the back. Had no impossible chance to win. Now it draws. It's just going to need a little bit of luck from Barry One there. But it'll be, if it parks in the box seat, you know, I only have to, it can even be hold up to the furlong and it'll get home. So um, TNT. And I do note uh, the assaulter from Malta says that uh, the Pushka stable's absolutely flying as well. On his Certainly little, are. on his free little, um, third, third up, they're absolutely airborne as well. So that's Pushka. A perfect storm for TNT. TNT yeah. well, can participate from the low draw. That's the main thing. Home track, um, all that. So yep, yeah, TNT. I don't know what a price it'll be, but uh, doesn't matter. What the other thing the other day, unfortunately, was it odds on was dollar ninety to dollar fifty, but uh, pretty painless, wasn't it? That thing last week, only you loved yeah. it, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. So race two, number two, Horsham on Saturday. And the the, the late D, uh, DK Weir used to be a third up specialist, didn't he? He's, I mean, third he used to run through brick walls. Well, you like getting them fit. They were getting them fit. And then he'd never put any gear on unless they were really fit. Blinkers only went on third I'm or fourth. I'm glad you said on. on. <laughs> yeah, that's it. On. He can't be far away from coming back, isn't he? Weary? He's not coming he can't back. Be far away. He they can't let him back. We seem to what? be talking about we'll it on every week's show, don't we? There's some they're letting of... Bomber Thompson. They're letting Bomber Thompson present the bloody Premiership Cup. Everyone gets a second chance. Well, they're doing a lot of things in the AFL, aren't they? Oh, I could have said something there. We'll bite the tongue. They're doing a lot of things. China, what's bringing... China? What about China? Yeah, that was, I was going to say, I'm not going to bite. I don't think she'll be getting a second chance, but <laughs> I don't, we don't need to go there. 15 years it, so. or something. she got 15 years. Anyway. Oh, I think everyone's <laughs> best to stay out of that one. It's going to get nasty. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never, we're never putting it on the run sheet. Um, that's that's enough of that. Fingers crossed uh, everyone can find a winner across uh, all the races that we've covered. Feels like we've uh, covered a lot there. Horsham, there's a Group 1 horse running around there somewhere. Try and find it. We're going to see if Globe's going to be a superstar. And hopefully, um, yeah, we we uh, we chip away in a in a pretty uh, pretty tough uh, couple of days of racing. So uh, make sure you bet responsibly and bet slowly because the spring carnival is a long one. So jump on board all the subs. Boys are up and about. And and I'm uh, getting behind Shelby sixty six for the Everest too. I want him to be in there as the pacemaker after he led up that race the other day. First up, I, I think it could be a field of six in the Everest. So I'm kicking up for Shelby to be the leader, the pacemaker in the Everest. Go to Shelby. <laughs> Did he finish the course? Does it matter? He's just got to make the turn. He's got to be the pacemaker like the English races. We need one in this race. Otherwise, it could be a dead set walk thong like that was the other day. It was great to see Nature Strip uh, retire in one piece. So uh, big congrats to the owners group there. And the good thing is with Nature Strip, um, Paddy Harris and Rod Lyons, those boys, they've tipped a heap in and they're just going to keep buying more horses and just throw it back in the mix. So good trivia good for result. you before we go. Has yes. a seven to four favourite ever been retired 10 minutes after a race via press conference uh, with no issue ever before in the history of racing? No, goodbye.